All right, I just finished the copper shop. Time to pick up all of these shulker boxes and head home. Go back to my storage room, put everything away, get everything nice and cleaned up. Ah, uh, yes. My favorite thing to do after a project. Uh, let's see, let's put these down here and... Hmm. This... This seems different. Something... something seems off here. I think I've been weeded. Um... <laughs> It seems to me like I have been wheated. Uh, looks like, yep, we've been uh, pretty heavily wheated around here. Oh yeah, there's some more wheat. Quite a bit of wheat. Oh yep, even the main house. All wheated. Hmm, I wonder who could have done this. Definitely a mystery. Kami. Kami! I will get my revenge. Don't mind me, I'm just farming myself up a few flowers. Just a few of them for our good buddy, Kamikaze. <laughs> and now it's time for us to get to work over here at Kami's house. Let's, uh, I think we'll start on the inside. Oh yes, this is going to be lovely. All right, we've got all of our dandelions and I have a bunch of moss blocks since uh, we won't be able to put the dandelions inside. Let's grab a bunch of these, and I think we'll just do a little something like this. And I think that's one floor done. All right, let's, uh, I suppose we should work our way down the stairs here. And then we'll have to move downstairs and save the main floor for last. So down here in a storage room, let's get all of this stuff covered up. And I think that's the basement all done. Oh wait, uh, oh, I guess we can't do it on there. There's not enough room up top. All right, so that'll be good. Uh, so then we'll work our way up the stairs and then we will move on to the main floor and that should be his house. I think I've got everything, pretty much every block inside of his house covered with a dandelion except for this last one here. There we go. All right, so then we can move to the outside and I think we'll start on top of the house. We'll do the whole roof here. All right, just working my way down this last side here. Almost done with the roof, and there we go. All right, so now we got a nice dandelion covered roof. Oh, that is lovely. Uh, I think there is just a little, a small roof over on top of the front door. So let's hop up here. All right, I think that's as much as we can do there. And then he does have some flower boxes up on these windows, so we are going to break... Oop, uh, that was weird. Okay, <laughs> string kind of got in the way. Uh, we'll come up here, I think. I think we'll just, uh, we'll get rid of these sweet berries here and put something else in their place. There we go. I think everything on the house has been... Dandelion. <laughs> oh yeah, that's looking lovely. Oh, I love it. All right, so now I still have so many dandelions left. I'm not sure if I'm gonna actually place them all. I haven't even touched these two shulker boxes of them. Uh, we still got those full, plus a whole bunch of stacks in here. I guess I'm just gonna go through and uh, start placing them around his house anywhere that I can. Now, you may be asking, uh, Cirque, why are you just spamming flowers at Kami's place? That's kind of a boring, dumb prank. And you're right, it is kind of boring. Very simple prank idea. But uh, at this point, it's kind of tradition between me and Kami. You know, he spams my base with wheat, and I have to spam his base with flowers, which are... Uh, these are his least favorite flowers. He, uh, he very much dislikes the color yellow. And... Dandelions are definitely his least favorite flower in the game. So that's what we're doing. We just got to get him back. We got to keep up with the age old tradition. Oh, is that it? Oh, I think that's it. Oh, an hour later, 
I have placed down three full shulker boxes of dandelions. Oh, I got a few more here. And that's just for this right there. <laughs> oh, man. This is lovely. There are flowers everywhere. And I mean <laughs> everywhere. Let's, uh, let's take a little fly around so we can get a really nice uh, view, a nice scope. Oh, this is hilarious. Okay, let me uh, go away a little bit farther. Ah, oh, yes. Ah, oh, yes. This is beautiful. Look at that. Look at all those beautiful flowers. Let's uh, hop into maybe F5 mode. Maybe we can see it a little bit better there. Oh, yeah. I think we have thoroughly dandelioned uh, kamikaze. That is excellent. <laughs> and now that we got that business all taken care of there, oh, hilarious. And I've gotten my base all cleaned up. I've gotten rid of all of the wheat. We should probably take a little tour of the place because I have been doing some work here, uh, finishing off the houses a little bit more. Um, I'm not exactly sure what all is new since the last time I showed it off on camera. So we'll just take a little tour of the whole place. I know this bottom building is completely new. This is the newest addition to the cliff, cliffside village or whatever it is. Um, so this is my potion house. This is where I've got my brewing stand all set up. Got a little cauldron here for uh, filling up the water bottles. That's getting filled up with a, a water source up there and the dripstone. Although if that doesn't fill up fast enough, if I have to make a bunch of potions, I do have a secret little... Um, water source hidden back there as well uh but yeah so i've got my potion ingredients and stuff stored over here and then i've got some extra storage over here for the potions and then outside i've got a nice little uh garden of nether wart so i can grow that up right next to the uh to the potion brewing i thought this looked pretty cool i've got another one of these up there i think that's new as well and uh, this looks, this makes the whole place look really cool. Just adds a nice pop of color to the whole build. Uh, but let's head upstairs. We can go up this really tight little uh, staircase, spiral staircase. And then there's just a tiny room at the top. Mainly this is just a second entrance. We go through a tunnel through the cliff here. And that brings us to our main path, which goes down to the storage room. I think this is still basically where I left it, how I left it last time. So let's head up the other way. And I've got another tunnel kind of wrapping around through the cliff to bring us up to these top buildings. So I've got the enchanting building over here. Uh, this still needs a lot of work yet, but I just got my enchanting table set up, put some trap doors in the floor so you can kind of look down uh, at the big cave down below. I might even add some sort of uh, some sort of balcony out off the front here, so you can really get a nice view from up here. This is probably offers the uh, the best view of the houses. And then over here, we've got our smelting area that I know we set up when we were working on uh, the cliff houses last time. I think that's pretty much the same. Then we can head down here, and this is the final building, isn't it? Uh, so this is the kind of food building. So I've got some smokers to cook up the food. Got a little bit of storage for all of that. Uh, got a couple of chickens caged up. Looks like uh, the barrel's all filled with eggs. Just figured I'd set that up uh, so I always had some eggs on hand if I needed them. And then again, another little garden plot out on the front. Kind of hanging over the edge with some potatoes and carrots. Uh, let's let's hop back a little bit and get a nice uh, farther away view. So yeah, I really love the way those garden plots add a nice pop of color to the place. They add just a nice little detail. I definitely want to do some more of that. Maybe uh, add some more platforms uh, throughout the place with different gardens. You know, we could do some sugarcane maybe up by the uh, up by the enchanting. You know, because then we could make our paper there. Uh, and we could do some beetroot and wheat could be kind of cool uh, I also I did go through and I widened all the paths So I think the paths are kind of finished and laid out where they're gonna go still got to do some detailing to that 
basically like the main structure of this whole build here is done. Um, from here on out, it's just uh, doing some detailing and decorating to finish that up. Today we're not going to be working on the cliff houses though. For today's project, we're heading into the nether here. Which we actually have a brand new nether hub thanks to Chadward who is online right now. Uh, it's above the bedrock here so we got plenty of space to, uh, to build into. Makes it a little bit easier to travel around to the different portals uh, and obviously a lot safer. We've got a couple of farms up here as well. I think that one was a hoglin farm and over there... Maybe we'll check that out later or next episode. Um, but yeah, we can head down into the nether over here into the uh, the old hub area. And what I want to do today is something that I, I kind of said I was going to work on a while ago to the rest of the night owls. We need a blaze farm yet on the server. Uh, we've got a nether fortress off in that direction. But uh, I think there's only one blaze spawner there. Uh, I think one of them got destroyed while making a wither farm, or a uh, wither skeleton farm. Um, so I want to find one with two blaze spawners next to each other so we can get a nice double spawner going on. And I believe there's a nether fortress off in that direction. Uh, but instead of just flying over there, I think we're going to grab ourselves one of these little guys. I've got myself some warped fungus. Are we... Oh, we're not close enough. Oh, he's making his way over here. Okay. Uh, I think we actually need to put down some blocks, though, so that he can get up here. Hey, come here. Yeah, come up here. Right over to here. I think... Do you need to tame them? And then you can put a saddle on them. And then we can ride along on our new tame strider. Uh, let's see. I think this is a shaped recipe, isn't it? Yeah. Which is weird. I don't, there's not too many shaped recipes left in Minecraft. Kind of a strange thing to do. Uh, oh, before we go though, actually, I should probably grab ourselves some potions. Some fire resist potions, just in case something bad happens. Yeah, come over here. Let me, uh, let me get back on your back. There we go. Alright, and off we go, traveling across the lava ocean of the nether. Can go a little bit faster too. This boat has legs. <laughs> you know, of course, this happens. We've got lava oceans extending in pretty much every direction around our spawn location, except in the way that I want to go. Uh, I can't seem to find a way through this uh, through this land here. Yeah, flying through this way, it doesn't look like uh, there's any lava ocean. There is some tunnel. Heading off this way, so maybe someone's already found the uh, the fortress that I want to go to. Oh, we do have a fortress here. I wonder if this is the one that I was going towards. Oh, I think this is what we're looking for. We got a blaze spawner right up here. And I believe there's another one right over here. Haha, <laughs> okay, we found it. Fantastic. This isn't a great spot to set up a farm. With all these uh, magma cubes here, but I'll have to uh, just dig this out, make it safe, and then we can start making a little farm for ourselves. Oh man, I was just gathering up some resources for the blaze farm, and I just had a couple of very bad deaths. Oh, I lost a lot of stuff. I'm not used to this. Usually I'm pretty good at getting my stuff back when I die, which, I mean, I do pretty often. I'm pretty uh, practiced at getting my stuff back. But yeah, I came down here because I needed some slime. So I was digging out a few slime chunks here at spawn. Ran into a little water cave, so I was filling it up with stone uh, to block off all the water. And ended up, you know, losing air. So I came out here to, uh, to get my air back. But apparently the game thought I was still in the cave. I started drowning while I was standing out here. So I re-logged, and sure enough, when I logged back in, I was, like, back up here in the cave. And basically drowned within seconds of getting back onto the server. So, very cheaty death there. That really sucked. But then I made the mistake of uh, coming back here without any gear. 
and I hadn't yet lit up this floor. So, of course, I was met by a bunch of mobs. Uh, I ran past them, got into the water, and then I saw my second problem, which was when you uh, have stuff floating in the water, they kind of clip into the ceiling. So it was super hard to find all my stuff. I was drowning, and when I came out here to get air, I was getting attacked by mobs. Uh, so I ended up dying a second time. Uh, basically between the mobs hitting me and drowning in the water. Uh, so the second time I came back, I was smart. I grabbed a sword, some armor, uh, food, and torches. I made sure to kill all the mobs first and lit up the area. And came into the water, grabbed all of the stuff that I could find. And we did end up losing a few things. We lost a silk touch pickaxe. We lost my bow. We lost my shovel. But most importantly, I apparently had my shulker box on me. I had my cyan one, which is kind of my special one. It's got a lot of backup gear, uh, my backup bow, a backup set of armor, um, some extra tools. Uh, I don't even remember what all was in there. I think my goat horn was in there. Uh, so that's, I think that's the worst of it. The tools I can make back pretty easily, easily especially with the, uh, the trading village. But man, that shulker box, that had a lot of good stuff in it. Oh, okay, never mind. False alarm, everybody. I found it. <laughs> I've got my cyan shulker box. I forgot that I, uh, I took it out to re-gear to go back there the second time. And I didn't pick it up at all. I left it here in the bedroom, so... Oh, we didn't lose any of this stuff, which is good. I still got my netherite boots, my netherite hoe. We got an extra netherite scrap, you know, an extra axe, extra bow. I'll take that right away. Got a bunch of iron, my totems of undying, my goat horn, some emeralds. Definitely don't want to lose this thing. This is a, a very special box. Let's throw that back in there. Okay, I got all geared up. I got uh, my new pickaxe, got my new shovel, got my new bow, and I got all of the resources that we should need for these blaze farms. So the first thing we gotta do is, uh, I suppose, drink a potion of fire resist, and then we need to stop these blazes from spawning. So we're gonna make a little block of moss around the spawner, take up all of the spawning spaces, so that we don't get these guys bothering us while we work on the farm. So you just need to fill in a uh, 9 by 9 chunk, three blocks tall, uh, one below the spawner, one at the same level, and one above. And that should stop all of the spawning going on here. Oh, it looks like Kami found our, uh, our little flower garden. <laughs> I got some of this farm built, so we should be able to go over how it's going to work, or how it's supposed to work. Hopefully it does what I designed it to. Uh, so we've got a little funnel here underneath the spawning area, and the walls of this funnel are going to get pushed in and out by some pistons. Uh, so the blazes are going to get pushed towards the center, they'll fall down, and eventually end up in this little collection spot in the bottom. Uh, so we need to hook up all of these concrete blocks to the pistons and instead of having a ton of pistons we're going to use slime and honey blocks. Uh, so this piston is just going to push that block. Uh, this piston is going to push those two so we'll put a slime block there. And then this piston is going to push these three so we'll hook those up with some honey blocks. And then here again we're just kind of taking these vertical slices. Uh, honey and slime do not stick to each other, so that allows us to uh, to kind of put these right next to each other, and they don't interfere. Uh, so we'll hook those all up, hook those up, and then a slime block there to push that one. And we'll do that around all of the sides. So, let's see. Oh, I built, I did this one a little bit different. That piston actually has to go up one block there. I fixed those pistons and I got all of the slime and honey blocks in place, so that's all ready to go. And I hooked up all the sides up to redstone. Uh, so to power these pistons, we've got a line of redstone back here going into the side blocks. So that should trigger all the pistons at once. I've got the same thing on all four sides. And then I've got the redstone coming up from this block and a repeater going into there. And then the redstone comes back 
all the way around the farm back to here. Uh, this is where it comes in and then splits off. Uh, this side catches this yellow side and that orange side over there. And then it goes over here and catches this orange side and that other yellow side. Uh, right now I've just got it temporarily hooked up to a lever so we can test this out. We can pull the lever and the sides go in and then they pull back out, go in, pull back out. Fantastic. Um, and I have it set up so that the orange sides get pushed in first and then the yellow sides get pushed in. Um, and that is, ouch, rude. That's so that the blazes don't get stuck in the corners because if I had them activate at the same time, uh, let me get in here. Uh, if a blaze is sitting in the corner and this orange block pushes out, this yellow block would get in the way. So they would just kind of get stuck here and wouldn't be able to uh, move towards the center of the farm. Uh, so the orange pushes them out and then the yellow block will activate and push them down. So that will work out nicely. And then I've got this glazed terracotta in the corners because glazed terracotta doesn't get stuck to slime or honey blocks. And I don't want these corner blocks to move. Those will stay sta stationary the whole time. Uh, so yeah, that's why we got that going on. So now we need to work on the uh, collection area here. And I think to trigger the, uh, the sides going in and out, I'm just gonna hook it up to a clock and I'll have like an on off button for the whole farm. Uh, so if you're coming here to use the farm, you just turn it on and those sides will just continually push in and out and move the blazes to that center spot. Well, I got the killing chamber all set up down here uh, and it's got some pretty fancy redstone to crush the blazes and bring them down to low health. Uh, so when you step on the pressure plate here, it pushes out the blocks uh, right above the blazes. So that'll keep any new ones from entering this, uh, this spot. I don't know if you can see that right there before we get pushed out. And then it pushes out these blocks uh, right at the head level, which will actually crush the blazes and lower their health. Uh, and the redstone for that is kind of complicated back here. So we've got some redstone dust down there getting powered by the pressure plates. That gets brought up here and brought up to here. And then it splits off. It goes up these slabs to power this top row of pistons here. Uh, so that's the row that blocks off any new ones from coming in and then it goes this way uh this is like a pulse uh, like a pulse extender or pulse limiter it uh it makes sure that it only sends a certain length of redstone pulse when those pressure plates are activated uh, and then it goes into this like comparator fading clock that will push out this bottom row of pistons for a certain amount of time uh, so if we go and step on this real quick and then we come out and take a look at this so this redstone is slowly fading out and then turns off and then those pistons retract uh, and the blazes will be at nice low health uh, so I think I've got this whole thing um, enclosed I filled it up with glass put a little frame of concrete so we should be able to get this going we just have to get rid of all of those moss blocks so let's chug our potion of fire resist and then we'll start breaking all these blocks which hopefully won't be take too long here. Moss breaks pretty quickly. Usually I do this with uh, like slime blocks because those are instant mine. Um, but I didn't have a ton of slime and I needed it for down below. And the last couple moss blocks, let's close this back up. And then I set up a little hopper clock here to uh, make the sides go in and out. So if we turn that on That's gonna start pushing those blazes to the center hopefully There are some they do seem to be climbing out. I Don't know if that's because they're trying to track me. Oh, hey. Hey, buddy. Please don't do that I'm Working on something here Okay, we did get our first one down here See, I think these ones are still mad at me for being in there. Um, so they might be trying to get to me. Uh, whereas normally any new ones that spawn shouldn't be aggroed because they can't actually see us, hopefully. Uh, but we can kill these. And then we get a new group coming in. 
and they'll all get softened up by the crusher so now hopefully these are just a one-hit kill especially with the uh, sweeping edge oh yes there we go that's nice and then the new group comes in and the best way to use this farm is to wait until there's a bunch of uh, blazes up in the top chamber before you kill the ones in the lower one that way once you get these killed then uh, it brings a whole bunch down here rather than uh, if you just kill these right away you might only get one or two coming down in the next batch and I'd say that's a pretty successful farm it seems to be oh I didn't quite hit that one must have missed my uh, sweeping edge uh, but yeah seems to be working as intended it is getting us plenty of blaze rods here I love it uh, so now we just have to do the fun task of doing it all again making a second farm over here uh, and then we'll have to uh, enclose the whole thing make it nice and safe make it slightly pretty I don't think I'm gonna do much more than uh, some concrete and glass it'll be pretty uh, a pretty utilitarian build but uh, we'll try and make it look you know a little bit neater at least and after a lot of work but one shortcut we now have a double blaze farm here on the server it uh, it certainly looks interesting doesn't it um, yeah it's, it's a little goofy shaped I, I basically just covered up all the redstone with uh, orange and yellow concrete maybe a little lazy but you know what it works and it's done and I'm happy with it. Uh, I made a big glass chamber for AFKing in and doing all the farming in. I also dug out a bunch of ground around this thing. Uh, all the stuff below it and some of the ceiling above. So that's, it's, a, it's a little bit more exposed and kind of hanging out in the open here. I think that looks pretty cool. But let's head up there and take a little tour of the inside. Uh, one thing I still need to do is make a nice entrance for this place. I, I kind of think I'm going to make a, a better tunnel out to here or, or do something with the tunnel and uh, I'll hook this up to that. But yeah, this is what the inside looks like. Uh, it worked out really nicely with uh, these spawners. They're diagonal from each other. So uh, we got some nice symmetry. Whoops. Got some nice symmetry going on with the build. Looks a little bit neater, a little bit cooler, uh, a little bit more intentional, I guess. And if we want to use this, all we have to do is push the button here in the back. That will uh, start the hopper clock right below here. And start pushing all those sides in and out. Getting those blazes down to our little collection chambers at the bottom. Uh, which we can get to down the staircase. We got a couple of them going to each one. And uh, all we got to do is slice the ones at the bottom. Let that new group in to get crushed. And the nice thing about having two of these going is that uh, we can hop over here and get these crushed. And by the time we get back, these are ready for slicing. Grab all of that delicious XP and all those blaze rods. Then we can hop back over here and kill this group as well. Fantastic. Yeah, it works beautifully. I, uh, I already have a bunch of blaze rods from this farm. We've got one full shulker box, and I'm working on my second. I think these are going to be my uh, my new furnace fuel. Instead of using all my coal, I can save that for torches, and uh, I don't have to deal with lava buckets anymore, which I I kind of hate. Um, so yeah, those will work really really well with my uh, smelters and smelting all the copper ore for our copper shop. Uh, I added a nice little enchantment table little enchantment set up here for all of our guests to spend all of their uh, XP at uh, with all the amenities we got the grindstones we got the uh, the anvils we got some lapis we got our ender chests pretty uh, pretty nice little setup I also I don't know if these are actually gonna get used but I did put a couple of chests here just for extra storage uh, if people maybe are just coming here for XP and don't want the blaze rods, uh, they can just leave their blaze rods here for other guests or something. Uh, I don't know. It was sort of just an empty space here, so I thought I'd I'd put something there and uh, figured that might be a good idea. 
Also, if you're looking to make this farm yourself, uh, or at least this crushing mechanism, I did change it up a little bit. Uh, the redstone I was using is, is a design I've been using for years now. Uh, I got it from a tutorial a while ago. And it doesn't actually get the blazes down to a single punch, a single hit. It, uh, it works with a sword, you can still kill him. But I wanted to get him down to just one hit uh, to kill. So I had to lengthen this uh, timer a little bit. Um, so this is all the same over here. We still have the redstone going up these slabs uh, to power these top pistons. But over here, uh, I think this used to be four ticks and two ticks. Uh, but now I've extended it to four ticks and four ticks. And just uh, I'll try and kind of look at all the redstone here. So maybe you can build it yourself. Um, so this is just like a pulse creator because uh, we have a signal that's always on when the blazes are there and this just limits it to a certain length of pulse and then we've got our comparator fader clock so we've got six comparators here uh, you basically have like a loop uh, this powers this block which powers this redstone and just sort of goes around and eventually fades out and then we've got four repeaters here all set to four ticks and all of this uh, powers this redstone here, which activates uh, these pistons, which are the ones that actually crush the blazes. So now if people don't have a sword to use or don't want to use their sword, uh, all of the blazes are just a single hit. Uh, so it just makes it a little bit easier to use for everybody. And when you're all done with the farm, you just have to come back here and press the button again. That'll shut everything down so it's not uh, running not lagging up the server when it's not in use. Uh, and yeah, that is the blaze farm. Got a nice source of blaze rods and another source of XP here on the server. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. It definitely works really well and uh, it looks kind of interesting. Like I said, it's, it's a very uh, utilitarian build. Uh, it was very much just cover up all of the, uh, the redstone and that sort of is the design of it. Uh, let me know down in the comments what you think of the build, how you think it looks. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it was uh, informative and entertaining. Uh, leave a like if you did enjoy. And thank you so much for watching. We'll see you all next time. Goodbye, folks. Thank you.